Hello, everyone. I am, well, firstly, I'm testing my voice being in a video in any capacity, but more specifically, today I'm going to be testing the Witcher 3. I'm honestly kind of shocked that this worked at all, let alone as well as it does. We actually are fully in game, the game's completely playable. Um, and not only that, there's not really any performance issues nor is there any graphical issues, which is just fantastic. I will start out first of all by showing you both my container settings, and I'm also going to go through exactly how you can get hold of the specific drivers that I've used in this video, um, and I'll let you know which version of WinLayer I'm actually using. All of these things are going to be in the description. I'll make sure that there's links and everything and all the names and everything that you need to do. As far as actually how to put those things on, it would be easier if you watch on um, and I can explain that properly. So having made the container, I've selected Proton 9.0 and then it's the x86 underscore 64 version specifically. I haven't tried the ARM version. I don't know if you'd have any luck with that. I personally have had issues installing anything on that version though i did have some luck actually running a game on it but it's a little bit complicated um, so i'm not going to go into that right now i'm using rapper v2 as you can see i'm using the 8 elite 2-842.6 driver that's not going to be in this version of winlayer by itself you will need to get that and as i say i will put a link in the description for a place that you can download that and then you're going to want to select that. I don't really think this makes any difference, so that's fine. Once you've downloaded that driver, what you're going to want to do is you swipe in from the left. Oops. Uh, let me go back there. You swipe in from the left. On my phone, I've got gestures enabled, so I actually can't do that. Or you can tap the three lines. Scroll down a little bit, and you're going to see Adreno Tools or Adreno Tools GPU drivers. If you tap on that, Initially, there will be nothing here. That's fine. What you're going to want to do is click Install Drivers. And then in here, you're going to go into your files and it'll either be in your downloads. I've personally, I've, I've made a folder specifically for GPU drivers. And you're going to want to select that 8elite2-842.6 file. In the download form, it's going to be in a zip. Don't unzip it. Just keep it as a zip and then tap on that. It'll then appear in here. And then once it's in there, you can go back to your, your container settings to this little cog here and it should appear in this menu so that's what i've done for that bit then you're going to want to select dxvk i'm using version 10.10.3 now there are versions well there's a lot of versions in fact some of them will perform differently some might even perform better uh, especially the ones that say async that means asynchronous i don't know the rest of it it's like shader comp compilation i think and what that allows uh, the container or the emulator to do is to process the shaders while the game is running because otherwise what's going to happen is every time a new shader is processed, which is going to happen a lot when you first boot up a game, the entire thing is going to stutter and it's going to freeze. If you have one that is enabled with async, that's going to minimize that because it's essentially going to allow it to do it while the game runs by using all of the cores that it has available to it. That is better. I haven't tried it though or today. So I'm just going to be using 1.10.3. Some of these things can be useful, like frame rate, for example, if you're playing a game that doesn't have a frame rate counter. That could be especially useful because obviously, I mean, we're on mobile phones. I mean, some of you may be on uh, devices with active cooling, especially bigger devices that aren't going to throttle. So you guys can run uncapped frame rates, but for those of us on phones, running at an uncapped frame rate is going to make your device overheat. When it does that, it's not necessarily dangerous, so to speak, but it will make the processor slow itself down significantly. So it's usually the case that it's better to cap the frame rate, let's say at 30 FPS, if it can maintain that without throttling, than it is to just blast it at 60 FPS and then have it, you know, drop down from 60 and then it goes to 30 and then it drops to 20 and back up to 40. So I personally like to cap the frame rate, but for this video, I'm going to have it uncapped. On the next one, uh, it's Wine D3D. I don't think that really matters for this because the game isn't running a DirectX version that that's going to matter for. Everything else will mostly be sort of as it started. So the only thing I have changed uh, in this menu, I believe, is I've changed that to a GTX 1060. Now what that means is that the game itself is going to see 
the container as having a GTX 1060. This is necessary because if you have something lower uh, and it doesn't report to the game that it actually supports the DirectX version that's required, it might not run. So I think GTX 1060 is probably a good balance to strike. You could probably just put it to anything high. I don't think it should matter too much, though I would avoid using a GPU that has RTX or ray tracing cores or anything like that. So something like an RTX rather than a GTX card, I would probably avoid just so that the game doesn't get confused as to what it's capable of. I've put video memory to 496. I don't think it's really necessary. You could probably get away with two. This will be heavily dependent on how much RAM your device has. I honestly wouldn't even recommend trying The Witcher 3 unless you have 12 gigabytes of RAM. You may be able to do it on eight. I personally haven't tried. Um, and that's that for that section. Then we're going to want to move over to the last one on this. Sometimes you can get away with putting this on performance. This will increase the performance on the CPU side of things. However, the things that it does to achieve that can make certain games either be more unstable or just not run at all, which is obviously not something that you want. In a game like this specifically, it's probably worth just keeping it on compatibility. I haven't tried any of the other ones yet, but... You know, you can experiment and see if it works for you. I've got this on load only essential services and then all of the processor affinity is selected. Now I did install the GOG version of the game. I've pretty much exclusively used GOG for this, partially because I, I like GOG. I agree with what they do and it's just nice to be able to have a DRM free copy of a game. Whenever I buy them, I just add it to a big hard drive full of those games. And then if the site ever goes down or they go out of business, I've got a way to easily and legally access games that I've purchased. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but yeah, uh, that's the way to do it, if you ask me. But it, more importantly for this, it, it works better generally because of the fact that it's DRM-free. So you're not going to have any issues with, with the game not launching purely because it can't verify that you own the game or anything. It will just try and run regardless. So uh, I'm going to double tap on this. Now, it does take a second to start. That's to be expected. I mean, this is a big game running on a phone. I mean, I can't really wrap my head around it. I mean, it was only 10 years ago that this game came out and you needed a beefy PC for it to run like at all. And now we're emulating it on a phone. That's just crazy to me. I mean, we don't even really have particularly good driver support yet. The uh, older Snapdragon chips, namely the 8 Gen 3 and below, they actually have... A, a custom driver called a turnip driver, but those drivers don't work on the 8 Gen, sorry, the 8 Elite and the 8 Elite Gen 5. The names are just unbelievable. The first 8 Elite, which is the chip that I'm showing you today, that is, I believe, just the 8 Elite in name, but it's technically the 8 Elite Gen 4. And then there is another chip called the ALE Gen 5. Those two chips are using a newer GPU architecture. Uh, and because of that, turnip drivers won't work on them. And they may not really be a thing for a while, if ever, just purely because of the fact that Qualcomm have made it a bit more difficult to develop drivers for them. Right, so I had this running at 720p originally. It doesn't seem to enjoy being in my phone's uh, widescreen or ultra widescreen aspect ratio. Unfortunately, as far as I can see, isn't a way to specifically choose the resolution. It's a little bit weird. Well, let me just change that back to a 16 by 9 resolution quickly. Right, back again, a 16 by 9 resolution selected, in this case uh, 720p. My phone's native resolution is basically 720p. It's actually a bit Sorry, not my phone's native resolution. Half of my phone's native resolution, so literally halved on both, both sides. It's 1344 by 608. That's a little below 720p, but in terms of rough pixel count, about the same. Some games will respond just fine to using that weird aspect ratio, weird resolution. This one does not. Um, let me just turn that down so that I can hear myself. Unfortunately, this one doesn't. That is actually the first quirk that I've noticed in this. Yeah, weird. There doesn't actually seem to be a way to change the resolution as far as I can tell. I might just be being an idiot. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure normally that shows up under the normal graphic settings, but uh, I guess it doesn't here. Regardless, 
not the worst thing in the world. I guess you just need to run the game in a 16 by 9 resolution, which is not really a problem on my phone specifically because it's got an OLED display, so the back black bars on the side aren't distracting at all. It does take a little while to load in. Again, can't really expect anything different, to be honest. I mean, in Fallout 4, the loading times were just absurdly quick, so that was kind of a shock. But the fact that this even loads in at all is frankly absurd to me. Well, as you can see, there are some immediate stars. You will get a lot of stars, uh, and especially in a big game like this. That's kind of to be expected. Like I said, it's not running the asynchronous version of the XVK, so every time it compiles a shader, it's going to stutter. The good news is that it will only do that once um, per shader that it needs to compile. Of course, there are going to be things in the game, you know, throughout the game even, that you know, haven't been on the screen before. Uh, whenever that happens, there will be a stutter, but it's it's nothing egregious. It's not it's not too bad. I've got it capped to thirty at the moment. Um, I have had to re-record this footage purely because of the fact that unfortunately my screen recorder seems to have an aneurysm every time I uncap the frame rate. Uh, so the footage itself looks horrible uh, after the fact. Really annoying. Um, I will just briefly show you the uh, frame rate that we'll be getting when it's not capped. Uh, of course I'm an idiot, so I've just not done that. So you can see that there is a nice 40 to 50 FPS. Like I say, uh, not only is it going to look like crap uh, on your end, but it's also just not going to stay that way. You're not going to get a consistent 50 FPS throughout because of the fact that this is a phone and it does thermal throttle. And it's not a little bit of thermal throttling, it's a lot of thermal throttling, like half the performance. So for me personally, I'd prefer it to just be consistent and not be jumping all over the place. Uh, but it, it, it looks fantastic. In my opinion, it looks amazing. And <laughs> I played this originally on an Xbox One at 30 FPS, so to get the same frame rate on my phone 10 years later uh, with way better graphics than you would ever be able to get out of a Nintendo Switch is just... Well, it's absurd, uh, I, and, I, and I can even put my save from from my PC to this. So, I mean, I know you can do that normally, but just the fact that I can do that within this emulator on my phone is is it's amazing, and it runs so good. Well, especially in comparison to what I had expected, I didn't think it was going to run at all. Five was getting the freak. Yeah, the level that we're at at a second, that's not really an issue. I, I'm, I'm shocked that this works. I'm genuinely shocked. Uh, I'm lost for words, I don't know how to describe the achievement that, that this really is. And I mean, obviously it's no thanks to me. The Android emulation community is cracked. Like, actually cracked. The fact that this is even a thing is just insane. I mean, we, these companies will not release ports of their games, even though people would buy them, because, you know, can't really blame them. They make more money on crappy mobile games. But the fact that I can run this to this level on my phone, admittedly, it is basically the highest end chip that you can get on a phone. Uh, it, it, it's, it's insane. I mean, this would be running much better, like, much better, if it was running natively, but the fact that this thing rips through an emulated version of PC version is mind blowing. I will just briefly go through these settings that I'm using. So if I go to post processing, so I've got pretty much everything turned off, barring uh, anti-aliasing, bloom. I have ambient occlusion enabled. I think that it makes enough of a difference to the shadowing and the sort of contrast of the image to be worth it. You might want to turn it off if you're struggling uh, FPS-wise. 
Uh, I've got vignetting, or <laughs> vignetting, however you say that, enabled. I've got light shafts enabled. And if I head over to graphic settings, I've got pretty much everything on low, barring water quality, which I always like to have on medium or higher. Grass density, the same thing. Uh, the texture quality I've got on high, this doesn't really impact performance. And if you've got enough VRAM, which four gigabytes is plenty, uh, that would be fine. I mean, this game, when it came out in 2016, uh, I believe like the GTX 7 series uh, or the 9 series, that would have been a pretty normal amount of VRAM to have. So that's fine. Uh, the foliage visibility range, medium, and then everything else on low. And it's just, it's perfect. Well, <laughs> other than the stuttering, it's perfect. As I say, if I do have any luck with any other DXVK versions, especially the versions that have async enabled, I will jot that down in the description. If you have any other questions regarding this game or even any other game, or if you just want to suggest a game that you'd like me to try uh, and get running on this phone, uh, I'll be happy to do that and I'll answer any questions that you've got. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.